The first time we were ever in the paper, it came with this headline. And holy shit, it was embarrassing. <laughs> because who even thinks that? And who actually says it out loud to a journalist <laughs> when saving the world by baking is not actually what you were trying to do? We just wanted to do a little bit of good in our own community. But cake has taught us a lot over the past year or so and even we're starting to think that maybe you can actually save the world by baking. About 18 months ago, we were becoming increasingly dismayed at the sorry state of things here in New Zealand, that despite living in this beautiful, bountiful country of ours, not everyone is getting a fair deal. All around us, the numbers of homeless were skyrocketing, refuges were stretched beyond capacity, children are going to school without breakfast or lunch or shoes, And support services everywhere are closing down despite increased demand due to lack of funding. It seemed to us that there were hearts breaking all over our city and that was breaking ours. So we did what any rational person would do in that situation. We got very drunk. <laughs> On pink bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> so from the comfort and privilege of a squishy armchair and a fancy cocktail bar, we came up with a bunch of terribly clever things that should be being done to save the world. But unfortunately, that despairing feeling didn't actually go away, despite having dusted off our hangover. <laughs> in fact, it got worse. So. We couldn't lie in bed all day and mope and be all a bit miserable, so we decided to have a crack at changing our world with cake. And we started Good Bitches Baking, which is exactly what it says on the tin. <laughs> We're a bunch of good people who just want to help others in our community, and there's no particular demographic for that. We range from age 7 to 70, students to retirees, stay-at-home dads to fancy lawyers. We united in one thing, which is our belief in the power of kindness. We just happen to spread it round town in cakes. Every week, our good bitches bake a treat in their own home. It's collected and delivered to organisations that support people having a difficult time. We deliver to places like hospice and refuge, to soup kitchens, shelters and halfway houses. We deliver to people who are enduring sadness or illness, or people suffering from violence or poverty or even homelessness. And we don't judge why they're in that situation. We just want to show them some kindness and to let them know that somebody cares. We call it giving people one moment of sweetness in an otherwise shitty day. <laughs> the thing is, most people are good bitches at heart. Most people want to help out the less fortunate and look after those in their community. But it's, it's really hard to know how, or it can be confronting or even intimidating to do something on your own. Or it's hard to just get started. And Good Bitches Baking is made for people like that, for people who just want to know how to help others in their community. And bloody hell, it turns out there are quite a lot of people exactly like that out there. When we kicked this off with a post on Facebook, aimed at our mates in September 2014, we honestly thought that about half a dozen of our friends would be keen and we'd all have a lovely time baking people happy. Our first roster had 15 people on it, all based here in central Wellington. We genuinely didn't mean to start a national charity. A little over a year later, we have 10 chapters actively bitching around the country already. <laughs> And about six more in the pipeline. We have about 600 volunteers. And we lost count a little while ago, but we think it adds up to about 60,000 moments of happiness for Kiwis having a really bad day. Woo! 
We've even been approached from overseas, from people overseas. We've had inquiries from quite a lot of places in Australia, and even as far away as the United States and Ireland, all desperate for us to set up something there. So the growth has been startling, and for us personally, at times overwhelming, especially at a time when volunteering is declining and people complain of compassion fatigue. But what's been more startling than the growth, however, is the impact that our crazy, sweary idea has had on everyone involved, and not just the people eating the baking. We've seen that it's brought families and friends together. Mums and dads, kids of all ages, grandparents, workmates, flatmates are all joining together to bake treats for strangers. Kids are learning about charity by using their own hands in their own home to bake something delicious, not eat it, and give it away. <laughs> And through this, they're learning about the world beyond their often really sheltered doors by learning about the places that their baking goes to. Some of our bitches have told us about the really hard and sadly necessary conversations that they've had to have with their young sons and daughters to explain what a women's refuge is for. There's this story that one of our bitches told us recently. She has two nearly teenage daughters, and her mum, their grandma, was gravely ill with cancer, and it looked like she needed to go to hospice in the not-too-distant future. Now, those girls regularly helped our good bitch with her bitching duties, and they loved it. <laughs> I think one of the main reasons they loved it is they were allowed to swear. <laughs> one week, they were rostered on to deliver to their local hospice. The girls were terrified. They were flat out refused to go. They didn't want to go to this big, scary place where people like Grandma go to die. But she took them anyway, and they had a really good look around the grounds and looked at the lovely gardens and the beautiful rooms and the groups of families having a nice time together. And afterwards, they said to their mum, it's OK, mum, I'm not so worried about Grandma anymore. I know that if she has to go to a beautiful place like hospice, she's going to be really well cared for. Now, that experience played a really important role in helping those girls come to terms with their grief. From talking to hundreds of volunteers, recipients and support organisations, we've realised that the impact of Good Bitches Baking is largely the same for everyone involved, regardless of whether they're baking or eating. And that is, they feel more compassion, they feel more connected to their community, they feel less helpless, and they feel less alone. And we think it boils down to two very fundamental things, home and hope. Now, home is something I'm going to assume everybody listening to this today is lucky enough to take for granted. It means security and belonging. One of the most consistent factors linking our wide range of recipients is that for a whole bunch of different reasons, in that moment, they're lacking a home. Some people are away from home for cancer treatment. Others are not welcome at home because of addiction or mental illness. Young girls are asked to leave because they're pregnant. And for some, home simply isn't safe. And others don't even have a home at all. What has surprised us is that something as basic as a chocolate cake can give people back a little bit of the sense of home that they're lacking at that time, and that the benefits of this extend well beyond just that person feeling cared about. The fantastic staff at Women's Refuge tell us that on the days when they have our cakes in their offices, which are often pretty sparse, the women and children visiting there tend to stay around a little bit longer. They seem to feel a little bit more comfortable, and that helps them open up a little bit more. And this means that the team there can understand their needs better and get them more help. And every so often, the kids leave with a little smile on their worried faces. It made us cry when we first discovered that prior to receiving our baking, some people have never had home baking at all. Which is extraordinary, growing up in a country like New Zealand, where scones with cream and raspberry jam and pavlova are essentially part of our country's DNA. But for many, many of the stories our recipients tell us is that our baking made them feel a little bit more at home, wherever they actually were. Now, for the People at the night shelter, they do an amazing job, but it's still a really bleak place. And they tell us that the guys are stoked when they come in from a long, cold day on the streets to find a plate of cookies on the table. The guys themselves say that it makes the place feel warmer and much more like coming home. The warmth of a home can have amazing benefits. 
a woman wrote to us recently to tell us about pie. And she was staying at Ronald McDonald House with her husband while their baby daughter was gravely ill in hospital across the road. And one afternoon, they enjoyed a piece of pie that we'd dropped off at the house. Later that night, she was over on the ward and he was at the house and he texted her to say that there was one piece left and he was eating it. <laughs> now they had a bit of text banter back and forth about the ethics of him eating the last piece of pie. <laughs> and she wrote to tell us that it was the first non-sick baby related interaction that she'd had with her husband for weeks. Now for the person who baked that pie, it was an hour or so of fun in the kitchen and some warm fuzzies. But for that couple, it represented the hope that one day their lives might be normal again. Now, it's fair to say that despite us not meaning to start a big thing, we really, really didn't mean to. <laughs> or the pink bubbles involved in its inception, our slightly tipsy idea has grown into a meaningful movement for kindness. And we've learnt that there's power in doing something, anything, no matter how small, just do something. And we shouldn't have been surprised that the idea has caught on because many of the elements of success were there by design. Here's what we think has made the difference. It's really personal. People are making things with their hands in their home and giving it to a real person in their own community. And this is a person that they can imagine and in some cases imagine being. And that feels more meaningful than chucking a few dollars in a collection bucket on your way back from getting a coffee. It's both small and big at the same time. A batch of ginger crunch is easy to whip up, so it's easy to fit into your life. But it's also to easy to think that because it's so small, it's not going to make a difference, so why bother? But when that batch of ginger crunch is one of thousands of moments of sweetness being shared with struggling Kiwis all over the country that particular week, well, then you feel like you're part of something much bigger than just you. And for those thousands of people eating our baking, the fact that they know that a stranger went to effort to bake them a treat on a shitty day, well, that really does actually make a difference. It's not conventional. We know that people don't normally put swears in the name of the charity they accidentally set up. <laughs> but calling ourselves good bitches baking wasn't an accident. We knew it would get us a lot of attention. But it's authentic. Good bitch is what we actually call each other and our mates when we have actually been good. <laughs> our volunteers feel part of something, part of a movement, and they're really, really proud of it. It was, we knew what we were doing when we created our frilly pink logo and slapped it on the back of our t-shirts like a gang patch. <laughs> and when we decided to call our local groups chapters, we knew it would create a sense of belonging. <laughs> that and the fact that Nick was seriously obsessed with the TV show Sons of Anarchy at the time. <laughs> our bitches proudly live our values. They talk about my bitching this week, and they even put good bitch on their CV. This is working because we've stuck really strongly to our core purpose, which is our overriding belief that on a very bad day, a tiny moment of kindness can give you just the lift you need to haul your ass through that day and give you the hope that the next one might be better. And we don't bake for any other purpose. And somehow we've tapped into the core of what people want for their community, to feel less helpless, to rage against the crappiness and the shittiness they see around them, and to have hope that one day things can be better. And people love this because it's just really sweet. <laughs> We've seen a lot of cakes and biscuits in the last year or so, but Good Bitches Baking isn't actually about baking at all. It's about giving people permission and a safe way to do something kind for a stranger, to make their, that stranger's day a little less rubbish, and to give themselves and that stranger a sense of hope. <laughs> And as one of our supporters wrote to us, you bitches make me feel better about human beings. Now we really do get that you can't actually save the world with baking. And that not everyone's gonna get drunk and accidentally start a charity. <laughs> 
But what we now know is that whoever you are, wherever you are, you can bake things better. Thank you.